the Laser Institute of America, dedicated to fostering lasers, laser applications, and laser safety worldwide. Mastering Light, an introduction to laser safety and hazards. In the 21st century, we have celebrated the 50th anniversary of the laser and continue to witness faster, higher-powered lasers do more than ever imagined. Early laser pioneers called the devices a solution in search of a problem. While they foresaw many of the applications that have long been standard in industry and medicine, a new generation of users and researchers are exploring a broad array of groundbreaking processes sure to enrich millions of lives. In addition to laser type, another valuable way of classifying different lasers are by their hazard potential. All lasers can be classified as Class 1, 1M, 2, 2M, 3R, 3B, or 4. Three organizations identify laser safety issues. The CDRH, the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, and the American National Standard Institute, or ANSI. Laser Institute of America is the Secretariat of the Accredited Standards Committee, Z136, and publishes the ANSI Z136 series of laser safety standards. Compliance with industry standards is crucial for any laser user. Non-compliance can result in employee or customer injury and lawsuits, as well as fines from OSHA. There are two categories of laser hazards, beam hazards, and non-beam hazards. Beam hazards refer to the bioeffects of a laser coming into contact with eyes or skin by intra-beam or diffuse reflection viewing. Non-beam hazard refers to ancillary hazards associated with laser use. Some of the potential hazards include laser-generated air contaminants, electric shock, fire, explosion, chemical and plasma radiation exposure, ergonomic injuries, robotic mishaps, and accidents as mundane as tripping. Control measure is the term for the complete spectrum of actions that should be taken to avoid hazardous exposure. There are three categories of controlled measures, engineering, administrative, and personal protective equipment. The first rule of safety is never point a laser of any power or classification at anyone, except of course if required for a medical procedure such as LASIK eye surgery. As mentioned earlier, another crucial control measure for those working with lasers is warning signs and curtains or other barriers to limit access to the area. Accidents can occur if personnel are performing other job functions in the vicinity of the laser without knowing it is operating. The area in which a laser is operating ought to be clearly marked for all to see. As lasers influence more areas of our lives and prove more indispensable in industrial, medical, and research applications, the need for properly trained laser safety officers and users is paramount. Remember, it is everyone's responsibility to ensure the safe use of lasers in their facilities.